OK, so what's a statistic? Well, I always go with a very clumsy definition, but uh, I say to myself, a statistic is something that tells us something about a bunch of numbers. And what it tells us, the something could be a number, or several numbers, or a graph, or a table, or even a few words or sentences, although obviously if it starts to get too long, well, it kind of defeats the point. So you get two sorts of statistic. The first one is the one we're most familiar with, and we usually refer to that as a descriptive stat. And the second one, well, we call that an inferential stat because it allows us to make inferences or draw conclusions. It, it's what makes it interesting to a scientist. We're not going to worry too much about these in this, this cast because there's not enough time. The descriptors will be plenty for us to have a go at to begin with. So, there are two ways you can use statistics to describe a bunch of numbers. First of all, the one you remember from your high school measures a central tendency. You might not remember calling it that, but um, we, we sometimes refer to them as averages as well. And these are supposed to give us a single number to represent the bunch of numbers we're thinking about. And there are basically three ways to do this. You can probably remember them all. First of all, there's the mean. And this is the one we tend to think of naturally as an average. So you work a mean average out by adding everything up and dividing what you get by the number of numbers you started with. So here's a quick example. The mean average of 7 and 2 and 12 and 2 and 5 and 2 is add them all together, 7 plus, 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 and then divide it by the number of numbers. Now we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers, so we divide it by the 6. And that gives us 30 divided by 6, which if you remember your times tables, is 5. So the mean average for that group of numbers is 5, and that's supposed to be in some way uh, a good representation of what's there. Next one we've got Put everything in order and then choose the middle value. And statisticians call this the median because median is an old word for middle. So the median of 7, 2, 12, 2, 5 and 2 is put them in order. The 2's come first, obviously, then the 5, then the 7, then the 12. And then we choose the middle value. Well, here we've got a slightly awkward set because there are six numbers, so there's not a single middle value. And when that happens, traditionally what we do is take the mean average of the two middle values. So add the two together and divide by two. And you wind up with, in this case, a mean average, a median average, sorry, of three and a half. And there's the median for us. Then we've got the mode. And this is the one where we select the most frequently occurring value. We call it the mode, and it's a bit like the French phrase, a la mode, to be in fashion. This here's a bimodal distribution. So here we've got two fashions within our data set. Yeah, two points at the top there. So for our data set, 7, 2, 12, 2, 5, 2, put them in order again because that helps us to see the groups. And then we can see very quickly that the twos are the, uh, the only repeated value, so that they're the most frequently occurring value. And so that would give us a modal value for this data set of two. Now, you remember I said there were two ways we can describe numbers, and we've looked at the central tendency, the averaging. Now it's time to look at the measures of dispersion. And these are supposed to give us a single number representing how much spread there is in our bunch. Um, my old stats DC used to say, there's no point in quoting an average, a mean, or, or a mode, or whatever, if you don't know how much spread there is, because it doesn't tell you anything useful. You need, you need both, both items to really understand the data set. And again, we've got three basic ways to calculate the spread in the data. You might not remember these quite so well. So here's the range. The simplest way to measure how much spread there is in our data, take the lowest number away from the highest. It's called the range. It's not actually all that useful, sadly. Um, you've only got to get one weirdly out there result, you know, at the top end or the bottom end, and suddenly the range looks massive when actually most of the numbers fall within a much smaller amount. Think about hours, the 7, the 2, the 12, the 2, the 5, the 2, again. Uh, the highest takeaway, the lowest, is 12 take away 2, which comes out as 10. But obviously, most of the numbers, all the numbers except the 12, fall inside of a much smaller range. So if you ignored the 12, you'd get 7 take away 2 is 5. Well, that's half the range. So it'd be a bit misleading to use the range as a description for this group of numbers. So our friends, the statisticians, have invented two other ways to measure the spread in the data, and they called the first one of these the variance. 
So now, instead of simply working out the biggest distance across the bunch of numbers, they decided to work out the average distance between all the numbers and the average for the bunch. All right, so if you think of the bunch of numbers like a map of an island, then the average is going to be somewhere roughly in the middle. So there's our map of our island. And there's our average. Now, if you measured the distance between the middle and the coast, and you took lots of paths to get there, then you'd have a, um, a bunch of numbers that you could average out again. And that would give you a rough idea, approximate idea, about how spread out the island is. So there's all of our paths to the coast, and obviously some of them are longer than others. So when we average these out, there's going to be some you know, squaring up going on. And so we're going to wind up with the sense that maybe that sort of distance there would be the average distance from the centre to the coast. And so that would give us a, a rough idea about how spread out the data is. Well, this is a bit like the variance, which measures the average difference between all the numbers in the bunch and their average. And when we do this, we take the average away from each number in the bunch. Sometimes the numbers will be less, and sometimes the average will. Uh, sometimes the numbers will be more, and that means that sometimes the differences will be positive, and sometimes they'll be negative. Well, obviously, when we add those up to calculate the average of the difference, they'll start to cancel one another out to some extent, and that might give us a kind of misleadingly small sense of the spread. But the cunning statisticians have come poor way with stopping this happen. That's that's quite handy for them, isn't it? What they do is when they calculate the difference between each item in the, the bunch and its average, they square it. And that means that any negatives get multiplied by themselves and then they become positive. And so you, you retain the differences that way. So here's our bunch of numbers again. We're going to calculate a variance from this. First thing, we already know the average is 5 because we worked it out. That was our first descriptive stat that we worked out. Then, take the average away from each number in the bunch. So the average was 5, the first item in the bunch was 7, there's the 7 there, so 7 take away the average of 5 comes out as 2. Next item was a 2, 2 take away 5 is minus 3, 12 take away 5 is 7, 2 take away 5 is minus 3, we can see that again aren't we, so 5 take away 5 is 0 and there's the minus 3 again. Next thing we do is square each of these differences. So this 2 needs squaring, this minus 3 needs squaring. Obviously the minus 3 squared out of the plus 9, because minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. So 2 squared is 4, minus 3 squared is 9, 7 squared is 49, quite a large number there, and so on all the way through. Obviously, 0 times 0 comes out as 0. Then we add them all up, because we're going to work out the average between these differences now. And there's the 80. That's added them all up. And then we divide by the number of numbers that we've got. So divided by the six items. One, two, three, four, five, six items. And that comes out, when you do it in your calculator, comes out as 13.3 recurring. Which is kind of unhelpful, because as you can see, when we calculated the plain old-fashioned range, we got 10. And we said that was misleadingly large. Well, this is even bigger still. All right, so that takes us on to the standard deviation. That's the final measure of dispersion we're going to look at today. Now, when we calculated the variance, we stopped the differences cancelling each other out by squaring them. But that meant, instead of getting a misleadingly small figure, we got a rather large one. Yeah, it was 13.3 recurring rather than the 10, which even that was too large. So, obviously, this sort of distortion is also probably going to be a bit misleading. It's not a very good description of the data. It tells us that there's much more spread than there really is. But not to worry, the statisticians have the answer once again. Now, the only reason we're in the mess that we're in is because we squared all the differences. So, they argue, if you straighten things out, you could do so by just square rooting the answer in the end. So, to calculate the standard deviation of a bunch of numbers, we take the difference between each item in the set and its average, and we square it. And then we add them all up. That's what that sigma means, add up all of these differences. And then we divide it by n minus, n is the number of items in the data set. And n minus 1, this is a statistical correction. I'm not going to explain why that happens. It's part of the dark magic of statistics. And that gives us s, the standard deviation for the data set. So just to wrap things up, 
If we take the square root of the variance that we calculated before, there was our variance, 13.3. Then we wind it with 13.3 recurring. There's that square root. So you just put 13.3 recurring into your calculator, press the square root button, and hey presto, it says that there is a standard deviation of 3.65. That's, that's rough because obviously it's a recurring decimal. But if you remember, our original calculation for spread was 10 points. And then we said it would be better if we just ignored the 12 and called it 5 points. Well, this here shows us if we allow the 12 in, but we give it a kind of weighting, then it comes out as even less than that still. And that says that our original items of data are really not very spread out at all, which I think anybody looking at them, eyeball testing it, would say, yeah, they aren't very spread out really. The 12 is a bit misleading, but... Everything else falls roughly within a range of five places, possibly not even that much. And that's it.